I wanted to share an update that you guys might find useful. It's a project that I've been working on for a friend and it consists of the Sony Nex 5 camera in a three axis gimbal made by DYS. And if you've done any research looking for a three axis gimbal for the Sony Nex, you'll realize that you could spend up to $2,500 on something. Now this with the stabilization controller, this is the base cam simple BGC controller. You're looking at about $275. I'll put the link below. So jury's still out on how this behaves, but I wanted to share a couple of things that I've learned that might be helpful if you're looking into a gimbal like this. First challenge that I had was mounting this. So initially it comes with these little metal spacers that mount, there are four of them and then you're left to figure out where you're going to mount the other end of this. With the Tero Hexacopter, I was left with figuring out did I want to drill into the frame and mount this or take another approach. Now if you're familiar with the Tero, you'll realize there are two rods that come that you can use to mount things. So I designed and 3D printed these brackets here. So on the bottom of this design, there's a little hole that I was able to screw into and basically get this nice and snug so that we could mount the gimbal. This is what that bracket looks like. There are the holes in the bottom and with those tarot rods sticking out you can see that that'll just slide on and actually mount it on the undercarriage right here but those will slide down. So after I get this in the air verify everything works properly I'll put these on Thingiverse for those of you that have this gimbal set up that want to mount it to a tarot and not have to do any drilling. It does leave me a bit uneasy you know, given that this is just a cheap piece of plastic that I printed and holding up you know a $300 gimbal a $400 camera so that being said I will be the crash test dummy for you guys hopefully we won't have any problems I printed this at about 70 percent infill very rigid and durable it's been holding the gimbal nicely it'll be interesting to see how this holds up over time in addition to these I might just put a zip tie around loosely suspended just in case anything breaks to catch this top plate and to prevent the gimbal and camera from falling out of the sky. So I've gone ahead and mounted this back on the front of the Hexa just for demonstration purposes. And before we dive into the simple BGC GUI software, let me mention that this is the instruction manual that you get. And to be quite honest, I've done a lot with these Chinese parts and components and this is actually one of the more well illustrated instruction guides that I found. So assembly isn't too complicated here. Plugged in the USB cable to the control board and the other end to my Mac. <whistles> Running simple BGC 2.43. Go down to my USB port and we'll click connect. Now we should see these dials update as I move the gimbal around. I don't want to go into detail right now about calibrating the sensor. The manual does a good job of talking about that. I want to share a couple of things that I've learned that might save you some time. So originally after I calibrated my sensor, I was having problems with basically the yaw and there's a little red dot that was just spinning round and round as well as my pitch. Whenever I would give power to the gimbal, it would basically go straight down. So the yaw and the pitch were acting out of sorts after all sorts of pit tuning and everything and I just couldn't figure it out. And so what I discovered is if you look at the RC tab, which is ultimately responsible for allowing you to control your gimbal manually from some channels on your transmitter, both the yaw and the pitch were set to values in this drop down. So it was looking for basically an input signal. So after changing that to no input, everything worked properly. So always just check these. At some point I will connect these, but when you're working on tuning your gimbal, you definitely don't want to have any sort of inputs conflicting with your setup. And the other big area where I spent a lot of time was my PID tuning for each of these axes. If you've seen my Taro gimbal setup, you'll realize how much time I spent trying to figure that out. Well, if you look at the manual related to these PID settings, they talk you through basically bumping these up incrementally and finding where it begins to oscillate and then bringing it back down. In my opinion, that is a very tough thing to do. And now with the latest version of Simple BGC, you basically get an auto PID setup. Let me demonstrate how that works. For starters, we'll go ahead and power up our gimbal. Have this 3S LiPo. 
Now these values are normally a lot lower when you start. So what I recommend doing is when you go into auto mode, for the first time I always recommend just doing a start from zero. I'm just going to have it kind of centered between stability and precision. And then I'll click start. You can hear our control board beeping. You can see it working through the different values for each of the axes. You can hear the gimbal oscillating a good bit. And this process will probably take around three minutes to complete. And then you hear that fast beep. And our PID settings, which differ a little bit from the previous setup. Then what I recommend doing next is just picking up your gimbal. It works fairly well. Now I do feel a little bit of oscillation. So what I found useful is going back to this auto tuning and what I recommend doing is actually start from current values before we started from zero and then we'll tune from that to dial this in even further. Now you can see our new values a little bit higher than the last. So I'll go ahead and move the hex around. It actually feels a little bit better. And related to your motor configuration, you can actually do auto mode to determine whether or not you need to invert this input as well as it will detect the number of poles. So in doing that, what it'll do is it'll rotate each axis and then determine ultimately your settings. So it'll kind of go through this auto configuration and then write those into the GUI which then you should save to the board. And now it's finally doing the yaw setup. And now it's done. And now my power settings are something that I've had to experiment with manually. That may be a little high. I'll continue to work towards good settings for those. So that's a couple of tips that I wanted to share related to this DYS gimbal. It seems to be performing well, at least on the bench. So I'll be anxious to get it in the air soon. Report back and let you guys know how it goes. I'll be sharing much more detail on setup later on once I get more familiar with it and flight test it. It's about 275 for the gimbal and the flight controller. From what I've seen, that's pretty tough to beat. Jury's still out on whether or not that's gonna perform in the air, but we'll see. Also, I plan on sharing these Thingiverse files for these brackets soon, once I make sure that everything performs well. So be on the lookout for those. If you guys have any questions or comments, please post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.